Hey folks, I hope that you are having a great Saturday. I'm recording this on a Saturday. I'll probably pu publish it today. Uh, I am Dr. Sean Michael Greener, and uh, welcome to the podcast Two Word Faith for Life with Dr. Sean. This is a little Saturday quick hit because I received <clears throat> I received a personal message from some a listener a subscriber and she was telling me about the situation with uh, someone that she was in a relationship with who uh, or she was uh, friends with who was in a relationship with someone who has uh, borderline personality disorder and so I thought, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys know, I'm, um, I have expertise in that area, both academically, um, in the um, counseling world, uh, as well as I have a lot of experience with it in general and in the counseling world. Um, I'm going to talk about what it is. If you're, if you're tuning in, um, no stress, I'm going to really in detail explain what Borderlamp really narcissistic borderline personality disorder is but um, so have no fear I'll, I'll talk about that that said um, I did want to address she, she had a really powerful question and and she was deeply concerned for her friend who is going through this um, or, and, and the friend is a male uh, the person with borderline personality disorder is a female and the incidence is uh, from diagnoses um, data, which is very limited. Uh, it's, it seems to be more predominated toward uh, more prevalent in females than it does males. And I'm, you know, I don't know uh, why that is, other than what I found was um, females tend to at some point reach out before suicide, before shunning, before all of these things than males do. So I, and I'm, the data is a little bit unclear on that, but my point in that is I think it's important to address this in not just a clinical way, but a, with a kindness and a, a bias toward the victims. <clears throat> of people who are narcissistic borderline and we'll say BPD or NBPD for short but narcissistic borderline personality disorder um, it's a it's a, a soul-crushing thing for someone who's been victimized by someone with this but it's also it, it's also soul-crushing for the person who is aware they have some level of self-awareness who has NBPD and uh, they don't know what to do about it. They don't. They don't know how to get through it, and so I embarked on a study over the course of decades, um, pretty intense. Um, I started my study well before it was even very well known, and uh, so I do want to say that that. Uh, it's a rapidly changing area of expertise because the information that's available uh, rapidly changes. So, um, so to bring you to the the question, which is, um, can a person? This this was a question posed to me. Can people with severe BPD have successful long term relationships? Now I will tell you, I answered this question on my Quora site. So if you go to the show description, the channel description, there's a link to my Quora site. And this has been viewed, I think, by now, 620,000 views. I have some views, um, some of my pieces there that have been viewed by millions of people. And I'm hopeful that it's, it's helping at least some of them. That said, it is a really, really uh, niche area of study and treatment because one, most psychiatrists and psychologists, counselors, 
and life coaches, those are the typical people that would deal with that. And certainly pastors um, don't tend to even address it. Um, and if you don't have areas of expertise, if you don't have expertise in this area, it's best to refer the person to a professional. The reason I say that is, and, and this is the reason many people with BPD don't ever get treatment. They end up uh, in a situation where they, um, you know, they, and look, I, you know, suicide is a difficult thing. I'm looking to see if I have to mark on here and put the suicide disclaimer on here. Let me see what the rule is really quickly. Um, okay, yeah, I'll put... I think I have it in my, in my speech, but I think I'll check and see if I need to put it on um, in print. Um, if there needs to be some sort of warning. Saturday morning coffee. Mm -mm -mm. I made a good cup today. So th that's the reason why a lot of counselors um, stay away from the topic because they're really, really afraid of the topic because a lot of the people end up in suicide. And so then you end up in litigation. Um, I no longer uh, professionally counsel. Uh, I do some level of trauma counseling for tier one operators and agency people, uh, completely confidential. Uh, I do that, but not much more. But there's, there's, there's a fear of it. It's very complex. It's very powerful. Um, and, and for the counselor or therapist, it can really be um, just damaging, emotionally damaging. <clears throat> because frankly, people with narcissistic borderline personality disorder or NBPD, they tend to be a buzzsaw. So the question that I, that I received in, in a Quora, somebody there uh, sent me a question saying, hey, you know, can, can people with severe BPD have successful long-term relationships? My answer to that was, it's not probable, and here's why. Border, and, and let me say this. Well, I should have said this on the outset. This is for mature audiences only. Um, I, um, I was a previous uh, to my injuries and the advancement of my injuries, uh, and disability. I was a subject matter expert in borderline personality disorders and in that capacity I was asked to write a simple guideline for people who might be dealing with someone in the orbit um, of someone with borderline personality disorder or BPD. And that was a that was an academic paper so it was very egg-heady. Um, they tend to be egg-heady but uh, and but this is a less egg-heady version of it. And it might help you clear up some questions you may have about a mate, a romantic interest, friend, family member, or boss that you just can't pin down what's wrong with them. Uh, I included several disclaimers. And uh, don't skip over them. Don't zone out. They're very important. So I also, I did try to make this as PG as possible because it's a very mature subject matter. Um, it's a, The subject is just really, really challenging. And, but I wanted this to be appropriate for a broader audience. So um, I don't know who will listen to this, um, even though my channel is listed not for children. Obviously, children can listen to that, listen to 99.999% of it. However, this might be something, you know, you don't want to sit down and watch with your children unless they're older. Um, but it's still for mature audiences. Uh, only borderline personality disorder is a mental health condition characterized by intense and unstable emotions, impulsive behavior, disordered self-image, a lot of body dysmorphia, and difficulty re with relationships. So I'm going to include some information when I'm finished here that will be helpful to you. I hope. Uh, here, here's some general. T and, and by the way, I'm going to do another podcast where I go in deep on what it is and how to recognize it and all of this. But this will give you some general traits of BPD. Not They don't have all of them. Most don't have all of them. Some do. 
and some are much more intense than others. Some of these areas in a person with BPD are more, but these are general traits. Intense emotions. So people with BPD often experience intense and rapidly changing emotions. They may feel intense anger, intense sadness, or intense anxiety, and that can quickly escalate. And by quickly, I mean literally in a second. And it can be difficult to control. Um, impulsive behavior. Wow, this is a big one. People with BPD, they may engage in impulsive behavior such as substance abuse, binge eating, reckless driving, or uh, risky sexual behavior. Um, alcohol abuse is, is huge in, among this group. They may also engage in self-harming behavior such as cutting or burning themselves. A distorted, now this is number three, a distorted self-image. These are things you look for. Um, some general characteristics or traits of people with BPD. Um, people with BPD may have a distorted uh, sense of self-image, which can lead to feelings of worthlessness, shame, or even self-hatred. They may also have difficulty, and I won't, you know, may also. Most often they do have difficulty understanding their own emotions or motivations for what they do. And so by that I mean sometimes they're, they're not even aware. Um, they don't, they don't, they're completely unaware of what they're doing because it kind of takes them over. So number four is fear of abandonment. These are things you look for with people with BPD general traits, not always all of them. Um, people with BPD often have a deep, and I mean to tell you, deep fear of abandonment. And this can lead to uh, periods of very clingy or controlling behavior in relationships. They may become extremely upset or angry if they feel that someone's rejecting them or pulling away from them. Now that may not even be real. Um, what they're feeling, um, what they're perceiving, m most often is not even real. The person, the person isn't rejecting them. They they aren't pulling away from them. Um, they're, but they but they perceive it. And then they, their their minds react so powerfully to it, and it's it, it's it's incredible to to witness. It's a fascinating. You might say, well, Doctor Sean, why did you study this, and you know, why did you become an expert in this? And because I see so much of it, um, and it's exploding. It's utterly exploding, um, exponentially, exponentially. So number five, unstable relationships. People with BPD, they may have difficulty maintaining stable relationships due to their intense emotions and fear of abandonment. They may realize someone uh, that, well, I'm sorry, they may idolize someone one minute and then completely devalue them the next. And in that person who doesn't have the, the spouse or the, the person in a relationship, um, it doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship. It could be a friend, roommate, you know co-worker or whatever, but, but they may idolize you one minute and then the next minute, kaboom, you are completely devalued. Um, and, and, and that causes such intense confusion and instability in their relationships. And I'll tell you, when I say it's one, one minute, I really it could even be one second. You're, you are the best thing since sliced bread. And the next second you're Satan. Um, and they don't have, to some degree, they don't have a lot of sense that they're doing this. So, number six, tricky one, identity disturbance. So, people with BPD may have an unstable sense of self, self, which can lead to feelings of emptiness or a lack of purpose. Um, I don't know why I have these on. I only have to hear the initial thing. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it's a podcast thing. Maybe you're supposed to have them on the official podcast. Maybe the, the podcast people say, hey, it's not a real podcast if you don't have this on. Anyway, they, they have an intense, uh, unstable sense of self. And what happens is this can lead to emptiness, feelings of emptiness or a lack of purpose. They may also experience frequent changes in their goals, values, or career path. So, 
I want to flesh that out just really quickly so you know. So, so maybe you know somebody that's just a, an amazing artisan in some area, you know, whatever. Whether it be art, painting, drawing, sculpting, whatever. Um, or maybe they have a, a, a lot of... They, they tend to be very intelligent people, by the way. Um, but maybe... So let me... Wait a second. I just remembered something, and I, and I want to share that as I clean my glasses. Sorry my chair is so squeaky. I asked my buddy. My buddy's going to come help me with it. I just know it. And figure out why, no matter how much oil I put on this chair, is it still squeaking? You ever, you ever take your car to a car dealership, you know, and you've got a rattle or whatever? This just happened to me, by the way, um, literally yesterday. Um, and they can't find it. They're like, I don't know. Or they can't hear it. Or they can't replicate it. Um, well, in my case yesterday, after working some things out, they, they did find it. And, and they know what it was. And it turns out that was some damaged, like brand new car, but some damaged um, part. Which they ordered a new part. And it's in, so we'll get it fixed next week. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I know. You might be thinking, what in the world? Um Let's say somebody has, prior to my injury, I'll use myself as an example. Prior to my injury and illness, um, which if you're just tuning in, you know, I, I have this terminal situation. And, but prior to that, I mean, I could do anything. I mean, that sounds so braggy. Uh, and I don't mean to sound that way, but it, I mean, it's true. And anybody that knew me, my family can tell you, my friends can tell me, I tell you, I really, there wasn't much I couldn't do. I could learn anything very quickly and learn it with a high level of expertise. And obviously post-crash, not so much. That said, people with BPD, narcissistic personality disorder, BPD, uh, they tend to really be talented people. And so... But what happens is, in a person with BPD, now this could just simply be, uh, they may have the attention span of a gnat. One of those no seams. They're out now in coastal North Carolina, where I'm broadcasting from today, or recording. And, uh, oof. oof -ta. Boy, they get on my nerves, those little things. Anyway, but it means summer's here. Spring, summer. And that's, that's an awesome thing. So these people, they switch from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. thing, thing. Oh, I'm going to do this. And then they get great at it. Um, but maybe they don't experience success in that area immediately. They, they, again, they're very impatient. And so they pop to another thing and then another thing and another thing. And then maybe, you know, they're an expert. Maybe their job, their career is in one area and they sort of self-destruct because they change from that and so this is a very common thing um, the next thing i'll move on from that again we're going to do another we're going to do another um broadcast uh another episode which will i guess i should call it podcast um the podcast judges probably will rule red flag on that one um disassociation People with BPD may experience incredible uh, episodes of dissociation, which can cause them to feel disconnected from their surroundings or even from their own emotions. Um, they may experience periods of depersonalization where they feel like they're outside of their own body. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat this disclaimer throughout this. Not everybody with BPD will exhibit all of these traits, and the severity of symptoms can change, can vary from person to person. So if you or someone you know are experiencing these symptoms, seek help from a mental health professional. Uh, BPD is a treatable condition, and with the right treatment, people with BPD can learn and manage, uh, they can learn to manage their symptoms and lead very fulfilling lives. Uh, this is the tricky one. Romantic relationships with BPD. Whew. So how is a romantic relationship with a person with BPD in the beginning? By the way, this, this particular teaching, I, um, 
I did on Quora, click on, if you go to the description of my show, my podcast, scroll down, there'll be links there and where you can follow me on social media and all that. And even if you don't want to do that, that's okay too. And I have links to my photography and all. Um, there is a link to Quora, my site on Quora. And I was asked to write for Quora several years ago. And uh, there's millions of views and, and all this. This this one alone, 620,000, I think, last time I looked, views. So there's a lot of people. This, this really matters to a lot of people. And it's helped a lot of people. And I've gotten hundreds of comments and all of that. So I hope it helps you too, or somebody you know. And that's how kind of how this came up. Someone uh, saw that I had posted my email and, and sent me a really powerful uh, message that really, really touched me. That's why I'm doing this on a Saturday morning. So how is a romantic relationship with a person with BPD in the beginning? It's amazing. It's life-changing. It's, it's the benchmark. It's what you always dreamed of. Romantic relationships with people with borderline personality in the beginning, they can start off in a variety of ways, just like a variety of ways, just like any other relationship. However, people with BPD often experience intense and rapidly changing emotions. They may be complete 180s, apples and aardvarks uh, of emotions and and that can affect how they approach relationships and how they're perceived by their partners. Now, here's some common patterns that uh, may be seen in the beginning stages of romantic relationships with someone who has BPD. Intense attraction. And I mean intense attraction. People with BPD, um, they may feel an intense attraction to their partner right from the start. You're like, whoa, this is powerful. Um, they may feel like their partner is their soulmate. I mean, right away, right off the jump. Um, and they may express their love and commitment very, very quickly. Like, you know, maybe a after the first couple of dates or, uh, you know, whatever, whatever kids do these days, whatever people do these days. I don't even want to, what people do these days. Um, but, but right off, right off the jump, they may feel like, wow, this is my soulmate. And in the, and in the, uh, just so you know, this is not a secular only thing, um, in the religious community and the faith community, this is rampant. So, I mean, people are people. A lot of times people who are in the faith community ha idealize, um, the faith community and somehow were, were exempt from, from all of these hurts, habits, and hangups, but I'm here to tell you, not so. So they they feel like their soul, their partner, the person that they're dating, uh, even after the first date. Oh, this is my soulmate, and and when I say they may express their love and commitment very quickly, they're they're like talking about moving in and you know getting married and you know all of these things. I mean, these things happen pretty quickly, and and part of that is idealization. People with BPD, they may idolize their partner in the beginning stages of the relationship. And what they do is they put them on a pedestal and they view them as perfect. Oh, this, this person is the best ever. They may see their partner uh, in some respects as, I would say, their savior. Someone who's going to rescue them from their emotional pain. And I said that, um, and I need to say that people with BPD are most often in, in intense emotional pain. They may be beautiful people, they may be handsome, they may be smart, they may be accomplished, all of these things, but it's miserable. It's miserable for them, and they just want to be saved. They just want somebody to, to help them. And so a person comes along, um, un, unwitting, generally speaking, um, they come along and they see their partner as their savior. Man, you're gonna you're gonna rescue me from this. You're gonna rescue me from this intense pain that I've I've had forever. Um, you know that's a tough position to be in for anybody. So so number three here is they have a high sensitivity to rejection. Remember I talked about um, fear of abandonment. Um, intensely high sensitivity to rejection. People with BPD often have a a deep fear of abandonment. 
they may be hypersensitive to any signs of rejection or distance from their partner. Now, this could this could be as simple as um, maybe we, we, we had a get-together or date or whatever scheduled and something happens. Um, and you're not you're not able to go, and so you you might call up or text or whatever people do these days. You call up or text and say, "Hey, something has come up. I I have to deal with this. Um, I'll make it up to you. I'm really sorry. I was really looking forward to seeing you." And then all of a sudden, that person they perceive this as rejection. Oh man, this is abandonment. It's happening. It's happening. He's distancing, she's distancing, he or she is rejecting me. This is what this is about. Um, so, what, so what happens is they become ultra clingy. Um, they become very possessive very early on in the relationship. Often they'll preemptively end a relationship. Um, you know, I, in order to not be hurt by you, I'm going to cut things off. And, and things may be wonderful really overall and, and, and in its totality, um, but all of a sudden it's ended. The relationship has ended and why they're doing this is they're, they're attempting to head off um, impending rejection or what they'll do is they'll engage, and this is pretty common, um, in secret relationships, multiple, multiple secret. I've counseled one couple um, where the lady was involved in seven other relationships other than her husband seven other and uh so so to avoid the fear of uh, of uh rejection or to avoid you know rejection out of intense fear of rejection and you know we can't just uh write it off to be that because it could it's a very high component of lack of character um self-centeredness, all of these things. These, these are all human traits. Um, but what they'll do is they'll engage in multiple other secret relationships to provide an other or a supply of attention, love, affection, and even sexual excitement. Impulsive behavior, number four. People with BPD may engage in impulsive behavior early on in the relationship, such as spending money recklessly or moving in together you know, quickly. Uh, they may, talking about marriage, date number two, they may also engage in risky sexual behavior or substance abuse. Number five, they're very unpredictable and their emotions are equally unpredictable. People with BPD often experience rapidly changing emotions, which can make it difficult for their partner to understand and respond to their needs. They may be very loving and affectionate one moment and then become violently angry or upset the next and people with bpd not for nothing they can be very dangerous and destructive to your life your work your family and i said i'd repeat this and here i am again repeating this disclaimer it's important to note that not everyone with bpd will exhibit all of these behaviors and the severity of symptoms can it can vary from person to person however it's important for partners to be aware of these potential challenges and to seek support when needed. With the right treatment and the right support, people with BPD can, BPD can learn to manage their symptoms and develop healthy, fulfilling relationships. Um, what's it like being a friend or a family member of a person with BPD? Let me tell you, it can be very difficult. Um, it can be very difficult to identify whether a friend or family member has borderline personality disorder without a proper diagnosis from a mental health professional. Here's some other common signs uh, uh, and symptoms associated with BPD you can look out for. Intense and unstable relationships. They have intense and unstable relationships characterized by frequent arguments, frequent breakups, and then reconciliations. And when they reconcile, I'm telling you it's intense. Um, you've heard the term make up sex. Man, that's off the charts. Coffee time. That is yummy. Um, so these reconciliations, you know, they're they're off the charts. They're and 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 the person uh, with a person with BPD, they're like, oh my gosh, it's all fixed. It's better. Why did I even? Why did I even worry? 
that um, that this was going to be a problem. I mean, it's clearly not. It's I overreacted, uh, but that's not true. Oh, we're fixing to get a storm here. Much needed rain. Um, that's unrelated. So, so these uh, relationships that there's they're they're unstable. I mean, they're. And and you and the person without BBD, the person with them. Let me turn on this other, this other light here. I dropped my mouse, which is how I scroll because I don't have great use of my hands. Um, I can't hold a coffee cup though, which is important. Let me go over here. Cut the light on. That's what we say. I'm from the country. We'll cut that light on. I always thought that was funny. <laughs> you ever hear that? Cut the light on. Cut that light. Cut it on, cut it off. I just think that's hilarious. By the way, that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Let me get a little closer here. So these arguments, they blindside you. You, you don't even... What's going on? What's happening? Ah, ah, we were getting along so great. What's happening? Well, that's it. It's over. I'm done. I'm done with you. We're arguing over the how much sugar to put in the tea. I think, right? Is that where we're... You know, you just can't make heads or tails of it. So they, you know, they break up out of nowhere. But then those reconciliations, you know, they're, they're intense. They're intense. Anyway, I won't spend too much time on that. Fear of abandonment. As I mentioned before, people with BPD, they have... Very often, I would say almost all the time, um, they have an intense fear of abandonment. And they may go to great lengths to avoid real or imagined ab abandonment, um, which includes having you around all the time. Every second type of situation. Every second. Oh, my. It's, you know, like on your heels. I want to do everything together, you know, um, which, which is intoxicating, quite frankly, to some extent, if, depending on the type of person you are, if you're a, a person like me, I, I like a lot of contact. I like a lot of conversation. I like to do things with, with someone that I care about and that I, I like that, you know, I, you know, I, I like spending time with this person. So I want to spend a lot of time, but a person with BPD they're so afraid of being abandoned anytime out of sight. You're, you know, they imagine that you're going to abandon them at some point. It's just, it's inevitable. Um, and so they may go to great lengths to avoid that. Impulsive behavior. Remember I talked about that. People with BPD, they engage in really impulsive and harmful behaviors. Binge eating. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Binge eating is is a big deal. And then, of course, when you binge eat, you have the um, manifestations and the consequences of that, uh, which include different eating disorders, um, bulimia, anorexia nervosa, um, all of those things, and more. Substance abuse is huge. And that can include alcohol. It can be as simple as wine. Um, you know, just over the top with it. Um, and very risky sexual behavior, um, public sex, um, risky sex, um, sexual behavior that is risky in and of itself. Um, a lot of that mood swings, just dynamic, unpredictable, incredibly intense and rapidly shifting moods. And, and that can be triggered by minor events or perceived slights. It doesn't, when I'm saying mood swings, it doesn't have to come from some, you know, uh, real thing. It, it can come from totally in their head, totally and completely in their head. Um, number five, distorted self-image. I talked briefly about that before. They often have a distorted self-image they may have feelings of worthlessness or emptiness. Um, they they may have a pretty severe image dysmorphia or body dysmorphia as well. They may perceive themselves as fat when in fact they're not. 
they may perceive uh, a, a body characteristic as really negative when it's not. Um, you know, their their self perception is very poor. And I'm gonna talk about this. This is tricky. Um, when I do the next uh, episode on this, I'm gonna talk more about this. But self harm. People with BPD may often engage in self-harming behavior such as cutting, burning, as a way to cope with intense emotions. Now, I, I need to say that that is a whole a subset of therapy and behavior to be addressed carefully and thoughtfully um, and with some patience uh, because that's a big-time thing. Suicidal behaviors, suicidal ideation thoughts, um, people with BPD may experience very frequent and intense suicidal thoughts, and they may engage in suicidal behaviors. Now, they, they may talk about it. They may say, hey, if you leave me, I will kill myself. Happens very frequently. Uh, if, if, you, if you don't come on this get-together we have planned, that's it. And maybe even going to the grocery store with the person that's it. I'm done. I'm done. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do myself in, you know, and, and, uh, you know, the first time it happens, you're like, what, what I'm, I'm coming, you know, two hours later, I'm just delayed, you know, a little bit and you can't understand it. Cause you're like, what's happening here? So it catches you off guard, but it scares you because if you're a person without BPD and you're with a person with BPD, and you love them, you care about them, you're thinking to yourself, holy moly, slow down, slam dancer. I'm just delayed an hour or two. But in their minds, it's just, oh no, oh no, that's it, I'm done. I gotta quit. I gotta quit this life thing. So are you noting a pattern yet? Any bells ringing or red flags waving, neon signs blinking. You know, again, the disclaimer is important. Not everybody with BPD is going to exhibit all these symptoms. And other mental health conditions can be present. Um, and they present with uh, very similar symptoms. So if you're concerned uh, that a family uh, member, your friend, someone you're in a relationship with... Um, you know, someone you're close to may have BPD. It's it's important to encourage them to seek professional, a professional diagnosis from a mental health provider with the right treatment and support. People with BPD can learn to manage their symptoms, and they can learn to live very fulfilling lives. I was I was asked this question, um, and I addressed it because I thought, wow, you know, people do spend a lot of time at work. How do I know if my manager at work has borderline personality disorder? This one has two disclaimers because in a workplace setting, identifying and pointing out mental health issues in others can be the third rail of HR no-nos. Now here's an UNO uh, disclaimer. It's important to remember that it's not appropriate or ethical to diagnose someone or label someone with a mental health condition, including borderline personality disorder, without their consent or a professional assessment from a mental health provider. However, you know, remember I talked about these common behaviors that could be exhibited by someone with BPD. Well, it could be a manager, could be a could be um, a subordinate, or could be someone even with you, but somebody at work. Um, managers with BPD may have intense and unpredictable emotions too. It may be difficult to manage in a professional setting. They may get angry or upset very easily. They may struggle to regulate their emotions and, and in response to stressful situations that come up in the workplace. They are also in, impulsive. Managers with BPD, they may engage in impulsive and protect, potentially harmful behaviors, making rash decisions without even considering the consequences. There's this thing called splitting. You're going to hear this a lot if you um, deal with this area. Splitting is a common behavior with people with BPD. Is they see themselves um, as, on the outside, they see themselves as very good, but on the inside, they have all these demons raging. Um, 
but they see other people as either all good or all bad, right? They, they, there's, there's no in between. There's, there's no moderation there. It's all good or they're all bad. This can lead to extreme reactions to perceived slights or mistakes by employees, and it may cause a manager to engage in erratic or inappropriate behavior. Um, and you, when you experience this in the workplace as an employee or a, a coworker, subordinate, or, or you're the manager and you, you, you have, you know, somebody you're dealing with and you're just, they're making all these rash decisions. They also have a fear of embarrassment. Hey, just because you're in, you're in the workplace, remember we carry everything everywhere with us. We carry our hurts, habits, and hangups everywhere with us. And, and that's good and bad. You know, we carry the good with us. We carry the bad with us. And, and if we're people of faith, we're not immune to this. Um, so managers with BPD, they may have also an intense fear of abandonment. They could be overly critical. They could be uh, overly demanding f of their employees. And they may have difficulty trusting others. And they may react strongly to perceived betrayals and rejections as well. Now, managers with BPD may struggle with building and maintaining stable relationships with their employees. They may have difficulty managing conflicts or giving constructive, constructive feedback. They may have a high turnover rate among their staff. Now, this is number dose. Remember what I said. Not everybody with BPD will exhibit all these behaviors and that other mental health conditions can present with similar symptoms. So if you're concerned about your manager's behavior, it may be helpful to seek support from a human resources representative or a mental health provider. Now for the tough question. This is the tough one. You know, hey, I just did a, I just did a um, two-part um, podcast on divorce. You should watch that. I can't say enough. That was a good cup of coffee there. Still is. Here's the toughie. This is a tough question. When should you leave a BPD mate or create distance from a BPD friend or family member? Man, I'm telling you. Dealing with a loved one who has borderline personality disorder can be a difficult and exhausting experience. People with BPD often... in exhibit these intense emotions, impulsive behavior, and they may have a lot of difficulty with interpersonal relationships. In fact, very often they do. What's important is to offer support and understanding to those with BPD. And, and you may have to do that from a distance. Look, don't, don't go in and get hurt. Um, people with BPD are often described as toxic, you know, um, too unpredictable, all too intense they're they're what is it too much or a lot i'm a lot i am a lot but there may come a time when it's time when it's advisable to leave a relationship with someone with bpd and here's some signs that may be time to consider ending the relationship with a mate a friend or family member with bpd and you may add to these, certainly. Your own mental health is suffering. This is number one. Your own mental health is suffering. And, and you're paying a price for it. And this relationship is causing you massive stress, uh, crippling anxiety, and even depression. It's important to prioritize your own well-being, your own mental health. Constant conflict and emotional upheaval, it can take a toll on your well-being. And it may be necessary to take a step back from the relationship for a little bit in order to protect your own mental health. This is number two. The relationship is toxic. I gave it its own bullet point. If the relationship is characterized by abuse, manipulation, or other toxic behaviors, it may be necessary to end it in order to protect yourself. Look, it's not healthy to be in a relationship that's emotionally or physically damaging, regardless of whether or not the person has BPD. Look, if it's a if it's a emotionally or physically damaging situation, it's abusive, regardless of... It, 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 they may not even be BPD. They just may be a horrible person. you got to protect yourself from that. This is number three. And this is tricky. The person is refusing treatment. 
look, I, I have already said many times, while BPD is a treatable disorder, pe some people may refuse. In fact, a lot of people refuse to seek help or engage in therapy. And by engage in therapy, I don't mean going one or two times. I mean, this is an ongoing thing. And if the person's not willing to work on their issues or is resistant to treatment, it may be difficult to maintain a healthy, maintain a healthy relationship with them. This is number four. And you know what? I would say this. Um, this applies to other relationships, too, and other circumstances or conditions. Sorry, I'm having trouble holding myself up. I thought I could get through this without my brace. And I was wrong. Um, but I'm, I don't have long to go, so hang in there. Hang in there, spine. Um, number four, the relationship is one-sided. If you feel like you're constantly giving and the other person is not reciprocating in any sort of way, it may be time to re reassess the relationship. Look, relationships should be a two-way street, and it's important to have your needs met as well. So if you find yourself in a situation where leaving a relationship with someone with BPD is necessary, it's important to do so in a way that is respectful and compassionate to that, toward that other person, um, which is often really difficult because there's aspects of of people with BPD that are extremely attractive and desirable. And we talked about that. However, that which is extremely attractive and desirable is also very dangerous. And it may be helpful to have a support system in place, such as a therapist or a trusted friend to help you navigate this process. Remember, ending a relationship with someone with a BPD is, is, is not a decision to be taken lightly, but it may be necessary to protect your own well-being. Now, maybe you're thinking of someone in your life who just might fit the description that podcast all the way up until now, but you're just not able to put your finger on it to be sure. If you find yourself describing the person as emotionally volatile, spontaneous in an unhealthy way, but in, but in this age of political correctness and, and intellectual dishonesty, you may find yourself describing the person in a softer way. And there are many words to express emotional volatility or unhealthful spontaneity. If you're using these or similar words often to describe someone in your orbit, you may be dealing with BPD. Now, I put this list together because sometimes it helps us to have that one word that we can go, hmm, okay. And I'm not saying you're labeling the person. You're not labeling it. But you're looking for behaviors that you may soften in a phrase, but one word may jump out to you. So here's some examples, not an exhaustive list, but it's, it's a 20 word list. Impulsive, impulsive, erratic, unpredictable, unstable, explosive, mercurial, fickle, capricious, flighty, inconsistent, temperamental, hasty, rash, reckless, impetuous, whimsical, unreliable, uncontrolled, unbridled, chaotic. These words can be used to describe somebody who exhibits impulsive or erratic behavior, who is unpredictable or unstable in their emotions, or who acts impulsively without considering the consequences of their actions. Now, this is the last disclaimer. Remember, it's important to note that these words are not necessarily negative, and that some people may use them to describe positive qualities, such as creativity or spontaneity. However, when used to describe someone who is emotionally volatile or behaves in an unhealthy manner, they can indicate a need for caution or intervention. I, I hope this has been helpful to you. I really do. Feel free to share it. And I, I do want to remind you, this is a disclaimer that I need to include, that... Um, I'd like to remind you that the information provided in this post, in this episode, is for general information purposes only, shouldn't be considered as legal or medical advice, care, or treatment. This post is intended to provide non-binding opinions and should, be, should not be relied upon as a substitute for professional advice. The content of this uh, podcast episode may not reflect the most current legal or medical developments, laws, and regulations vary by jurisdiction, and medical practices are constantly evolving. Therefore, it is advisable to seek the expertise of a qualified legal or medical professional regarding your specific situation or concerns. No attorney-client or doctor-patient relationship is established by the transmission of information through this podcast. 
any reliance you place on the information provided is strictly at your own risk. I disclaim any liability or responsibility for any actions taken or not taken based on the content of this episode. Always consult with a licensed attorney or healthcare professional regarding your specific legal or medical needs. They are in the best position to provide advice and guidance tailored to your individual circumstances. And by watching this podcast or reading the words going across the screen, you acknowledge and agree to the above disclaimer. I hate that I have to do that. It's um, it's a it's a very ultra litigious society, and you know you have to do that nowadays. So I w- I want to end on this. There are a lot of people going through a lot of stuff, really hard stuff. And I'm not unsympathetic to that. You know, we talk about the the pod. The name of this uh, channel is is True Word Faith for Life with Dr. Sean. And I want you to understand that occasionally I'm going to put out information that's really going to be controversial, and I mean really, really. And this is one of those cases. Um, this isn't the only thing people go through, but it's something that. I am seeing an awful lot of, and I believe a component of dealing with it, especially for people um, who who are open to this, is to place your faith in Christ. Place your faith, believe in a living God, believe in Yeshua, um, believe in the very true fact that any hurt habit or hang up you have is not outside the capability of the ultimate healer. And prayer, scripture, study, rest, exercise if you're physically capable. Just movement, moving your body intentionally. And then peaceful prayer, where you step away from the noise of society. And you connect with God. There's a lot of people that really hang everything of the faith on salvation. I, I understand, they're well-meaning people. But salvation alone is not what all of this faith thing is about. We're to live our life in constant connection with God through the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh. And that wasn't tongues, that was the Holy Spirit in, in Hebrew. Anyway, I, somebody... You're speaking in tongues. I can't have it. I was speaking in Hebrew, in the original language. But whatever. You won't believe how often that happens to me. <laughs> anyway, to sum it up, this has been a long podcast. I thought this would be like 15 minutes. Silly me. I have no concept of time, by the way. Part of my brain injury is complete lack of concept of what day it is, what month it is, what year it is, what time it is, how long this is from that, when that is, how far that is from this. So I apologize for that. Um, hopefully you didn't feel misled or tricked. But I'll say this in closing. Uh, you know, I titled this channel True Word Faith for Life with Dr. Sean. It's because faith isn't something you do sometimes. Faith is something you do. It's, it's something you are. It's, it's something you experience. It's, it's a giving um, and receiving. It's not all about salvation. Because we're here now. And if you want to be a witness to people around you who are lost, what better way to do that than live in joy? Live in joy. Live in the great hope we have 
of the risen king returning. Live in the relationship with God and, and to the best of your ability, obedience to God. It's, it's a game changer. I mean that. It's a game changer. So I thank you so much for joining this, this podcast. We're dealing with a tough thing, borderline personality disorder. And as you'll see up there, please share this. Um, sub subscribe, by the way, if you haven't subscribed. Share this with somebody who can be blessed with this information. Subscribe. Hit the little bell. Thank you for clicking on like. And maybe share in comments, you know, whether you've experienced someone with BPD. And maybe you're struggling with it. Now, I can't counsel you. I don't, I don't counsel that any longer. I do still write on it. Um, and do academic pieces and different um, social media pieces, things of that nature. I do comment on it, but I don't personally treat anyone any longer. But I can, I can direct you or maybe help you in some way to kind of get you started if you're dealing with it. Um, don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Okay? Thank you for taking the time. It means the world to me. I can't tell you how utterly amazed I am that people will take the time. But I'm thankful that you do. God bless you and keep you. May, may he make his face to shine upon you. And you're going in and you're coming out. Take care.